All right, in this Know the Nodes, we're going to cover the brand new Edge Extend node that is straight out of the box and inside Nuke 12. So you got to be uh, having Nuke 12, and also you can download this file with this material uh, on my uh, link to my store, which is uh, for vfxforfilmmakers.com. It'll be free, so please check it out and also support me on Patreon if you can. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump in. I did a really crap key, so I got the key which deals with the alpha information, I got the despill which de deals with the RGB information, or despilling and taking out the green hue that's uh, casted on the actors. So the key is a real simply bad key of a degrain, so I just degrain the footage, as you can see here. And then I use an IBK color uh, to get my clean plate that plugs, plugs into the color information of my IBK gizmo from which I get an alpha, but I have all this noise, so I'm going to go into this grade, and I'm going to crush it back. As you can see, I'm destroying all the hair detail. This is for on purpose, just for this example. Um, and then over here, I combine the two, the A for the alpha information, the RGB for the key light, and I get myself this information. Here's my RGB, here's my alpha, and then I pre-malt it so that it's pre-multiplied. So as you can see with the pre-multiplication, we get a kind of glow line around our actors and that is not what we want because let's say we want to composite them to a night scene or something or obviously sunset you're gonna have a very dark background you're not gonna have this kind of glow going around them so with that said uh, besides working in despill which is common and you should always get your work done in despill first and try to solve these issues uh, as opposed to trying to solve it with an edge extend edge extend is the last resort it is used, but it's used very sparingly, and if you overuse, can have a lot of artifacts. So, lo and behold, they've created an edge extend here. Again, this is Nuke 12. And again, this replaces all of the other extensions. Supposedly, it is a lot easier uh, in regards to having any weird artifacts occur. Um, so that could have to do with, like, curved edges and so forth, and uh, extensions kind of bumping into themselves. But it's going to extend out a color based on a line. So we are going to define uh, based on our original alpha here. And it's usually good to have a nice hard alpha, or at least not super hard, but not soft. And then we're going to define the line by making it back, go back and forth. And we're going to say this color of uh, brown, we're going to smear that forward. And that's going to fill in all this bright data that's behind her. Again, if you hit the uh, luminance button here... Uh, so if I just come over here, and you can see over here, you got this option. Pull it over. I just want to show you guys so you can see it. So you have luminance, which is Y. And you can see that you got a bright background there. So I'll hit R again to come back. Okay, so edge extend. You have a source and a mat. So you can always pre redefine. It's almost as if you're using a copy node, what the mat is, which we're going to get into later with this roto node. But I'm just going to put the source in and plug in our edge extend and take a look now these this is a gpu based uh render so you can actually use your graphics cards i have a geforce gtx 1080 for all my vr fun um, it's important to understand what's coming in and what's going out so by default it says source is pre-multiplied now is it pre-multiplied in this case it is but if this pre-multiplication node was gone we wouldn't have to worry about this, but we, could, we have to ask ourselves before we get started, is it, is it pre-multiplied? In this case, it is, so we're going to go ahead and click on it. And then it's saying, on your way out, do you want us to pre-multiply? So in other words, take a pre-mult and put it afterwards. And we're telling it, for now, we're going to say no. So that's where we could visibly start to see the edge extend in action here. And again, what it's doing is it's taking the alpha edge, okay, and it's taking whatever color is there, and then it's going to smear it out. So we want to take this alpha edge and just erode it in so it's in here and it's going to sample the skin tone as opposed to this bright white hi yellow highlight and extend that color out. Now around here, this is usually a no-no because hair will inherit the color over here, which will not make any sense. So what we can do is go to our edge extend here and it has an erode and detail amounts. These are similar... Uh, erode is a, a very similar option that you see in most edge extends that you get off of Nukipedia and so forth. So this is just do basically they they finally decided over there to to just make a note for this. So you can see the erode and as it erode, what it's doing is it's going in, it's going further into the mat, and it's going to start sampling these colors and smear those out. Now when you smear out these edge details, uh, they actually have a nice. They no longer have like a halo around the character of brightness but you start inheriting colors that would sometimes not make any sense. 
Like if there's a highlight here on this hair, why would the color of her skin be smeared into that? So usually hair is something you want to isolate away from edge extend. So in this case, you can see that it's inheriting this color and pushing it forward. If we take this erode and push it even further in, it's going to start grabbing, like, say, this line. So think of it as just an erosion and dilation of an edge going in and out, and it's saying probably right about here or whatever. It's blurring that color out. So we could see this firsthand um, by turning on our pre-malt and seeing the before and after. So if I come over here and just look at our actor and turn disable and re-enable, you can see what's happening, but the only problem is we're smearing his nostril. So that's where detail amount comes in, and this is a sort of, I call it a combination of sharpening and an opacity to the original plate shot. So at least that's what I can tell. So you can see as I start to pull this back, we start to get the, the nose detail again. I'll disable and re-enable with the letter D. We don't have, um, you know, we, we, we don't have this halo here, but we are retaining the nostril detail, whereas before, it's just this smeary mess. So again, you can kind of balance these back and forth to retain the details, and then what you get is a nice result. Again, you will, you might, the comp, this whole compromise is that you're getting a blurry edge around the eyes and so forth, but it depends on your resolution. This is a very blurry image, by the way. Here's where things can get a little bit weird for the hair. So you might say this edge is looking pretty good, but over here it's getting a little bit strange. Her skin tone is inheriting the color of this uh, shirt, which makes no sense. So with that said, uh, you can do different, uh, obviously, different versions of this, um, which I'll show you in a minute. Now I can take the roto node, come in here, let's go ahead and take a look at the edge extend. And you can see the mat, the, the actual mat is, is saying, well, what's the mat? What's the actual mat here? What, what's, what are we basing our edge extent on? Well, it's using the source alpha. So it's taking the information of the source alpha and bringing it in. Okay, so that's obviously what we're dealing with here, the alpha that's in the pot. So, but if I have a roto node here with just alpha information and I plug that into the mat, I can... It's just like a copy node in the sense of A and B, that the edge extend, instead of that, I can choose the matte input, which is that matte line, and I'm going to choose alpha. So now all we get is just this actor's head right here. And if I turn off my pre-malt, you can see it's just kind of edge extending that portion. So it's just redefining, in essence, it's just redefining the matte. So what I'll do is I'll disconnect the matte, come back to edge extend, and put this back to my source alpha being the input for the workflow. And the last thing I want to show you is this uh, option here we have for edge mats, mask. So obviously you also have the option for a mask on here. So if you want to, you can you know create a roto and do this. And now you have a mask from which, if we take a look, this is only going to define this specific area. Okay, so if we go to the edge extend and turn on pre-multiply, uh, the edge extend is only happening on these specific areas. So if you want to, you can define the areas that, obviously, uh, you know, the artifact areas that are going to be troublesome, like maybe this area here or something, uh, you know, maybe like the shoulder or something. And, of course, we definitely want to get our actor on the left-hand side there. So these are inclusive areas that are going to get the work, but the hair is going to be something we have to deal with either in a de-spill um, or, it, to a certain degree, a little bit less in, in uh, uh, intensity there. And, of course, you can always come in here, this is a little bit sloppy, uh, is to take a specific roto here like that. And then you could take this opacity of this specific bezier down until, you know, until you feel it's too intense. But that's a little bit of a hack work. So the last thing you could do is, is in this edge extend here is you have the option to use your edge mask. So I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to go down to a new N-E-W, and I'm going to choose a new channel, and I'm just going to say matte uh, edge detect dot R for red, and hit OK. It's going to say create a new layer. Yes. Requires a RGB or U or V or whatever is a dot at the end of this. So now if I take a look, I now have, just for use later down the pipeline, matte edge detect. And I have uh, just a line here that will define the edge here. Um, last thing on here, obviously, is uh, the channels. Um, you can do any channel for this edge extend. 
Uh, so if you're working on multiple channels and so forth, you can sh choose whatever channel you want to get it done. Or you can mi maybe just choose uh, specific channels for um, the red, green, blue of the actual workflow. So for instance, if you come in here, if you were to disable red, it's not going to do anything for red. Obviously, you're going to get a discoloration. <laughs> But that's what it is. And that's it, folks. That's the Edge Extend. Um, and again, you can get all this stuff online through my uh, site. Just go ahead and check it out. Uh, again, vfxforfilmmakers.com.